Most people know that melatonin is an effective supplement to help you fall asleep. Uh, melatonin is very, very popular. It's an over-the-counter supplement, but what a lot of people don't realize is that melatonin is actually a hormone. It's secreted by a gland located right be over here, right behind the, uh, uh, right here, right, you know, right behind the top of the nose and the skull, uh, in a gland called the pineal gland. Uh, melatonin is, is constantly produced during the day from the amino acid serotonin. It builds up to a certain degree, and uh, it's suppressed during the day because it works with what they call zeitgeibers or circadian rhythm. I'm not going to get into all that, all the nuances of how melatonin is secreted. However, let's point. Let, let me put it this way: during the day, serotonin is gradually converted. Serotonin is a brain neurotransmitter, which itself is manufactured from the amino acid tryptophan, uh, and serotonin is gradually converted into melatonin, uh, but the light suppresses it, uh, and what turns on melatonin is darkness. This is one of the reasons why you don't want to look at bright lights at night, such as computer screens. They have, you have like special glasses uh, that block a certain type of light called blue, blue light. Uh, blue light uh, tends to uh, inactivate melatonin secretion. Uh, any kind of bright light at night is going to bl blunt the release of melatonin and make it more difficult for you to sleep. Uh, melatonin is uh, generally safe, uh, and it's also uh, uh, usually starting dosage. Uh, for most people, they recommend the smallest dose that, that's required to put you to sleep, uh, which is about 300 micrograms. However, most people use anywhere from 3 up to 10 milligrams of, uh, to, of um, melatonin a day. But you should know that even if you take 1 milligram of uh, melatonin, you're taking a massive dose because the body produces melatonin in microgram amounts. 1,000 micrograms equal a milligram. So if you're already taking 1 milligram, you're taking a mega dose of a hormone which is melatonin the good news is that melatonin is generally safe doesn't usually cause any problems uh, unless you go crazy on it uh, a lot of people think if you take melatonin regularly like some people take melatonin every night to help them sleep they take it about an hour before sleep it takes about an hour to kick in uh, and they take it every night and some people think that if you take supplemental melatonin every every night uh, after a while, you'll suppress your own body's production of melatonin, but that doesn't happen. That's a myth. It doesn't happen. Uh, it's probably best not to constantly take melatonin unless you really need it, unless you really have a lot of trouble sleeping. Uh, there's a, one other problem with melatonin supplements is they've done analysis. A lot of uh, melatonin supplements are either underdosed, meaning they don't match the potency on the label, or sometimes in real bad cases, some of the, uh, uh, this not so much in the United States, but other countries, melatonin supplements have been spiked with serotonin itself, which is not good. Too much serotonin can cause a medical condition called serotonin syndrome, which is very dangerous. So, you know, you got to be, if you're going to use a, a uh, melatonin supplement, use it from a reputable company. And what I'd recommend is, since melatonin is broken down, uh, when you take it orally, it's actually broken down very rapidly, something like an hour or so. Uh, so what, what I've been using myself for years, what I recommend is what they call time-released melatonin. Uh, these these uh, tablets are designed to cause an immediate, uh, let's say it's a, a three milligram uh, tablet, uh, about a milligram of it will be released immediately to help you sleep. And now the way melatonin helps you sleep is it lowers your body temperature. Lower body temperature is a signal that sets off the sleep process. And that's how melatonin actually works. But with the time released melatonin supplements, like I say, if it's a three milligram, which is the, one, the dose I use, a three milligram time release, the one milligram is released immediately. And the other two milligrams are released over a period of up to seven hours which is good because you want the melatonin to, to last as long as you sleep. If you take a quick-acting melatonin, let's say the same dose, three milligrams, 
in an hour it'll be broken down and you know if for some reason you wake up you will uh, have a lot of trouble getting back to sleep unless you take another melatonin so uh, uh, a good thing about melatonin supplements is they don't leave you with a morning sluggishness like sleeping pills do prescription sleeping pills tend to make you feel groggy when you wake up almost as if you did not have enough sleep melatonin in doses up to th up to five milligrams maximum will not give you that sluggish feeling however if you go over five milligrams and a large percent of uh, percentage of people you will get those, you feel kind of groggy and sluggish for the first couple of minutes that you wake up so you know, again the main purpose of melatonin usage by most people is as a supplement to help induce sleep but what a lot of people don't realize is melatonin does a, a myriad of, of other things it's a, a very very impressive substance in fact as far as I know melatonin is the only hormone that has its own medical journal devoted to it alone it's called the International Journal of Pineal Research again pineal refers to the pineal, pineal gland in the brain where melatonin is synthesized but it's also synthesized throughout the body uh, for example it's it, uh, besides uh, the main uh, site of melatonin synthesis is the pineal gland in the brain but it's also synthesized in the skin the gut the liver kidneys it's it's made in the immune system it's actually produced in the testes and also in muscles now the way the body works if you ever study the body uh, well, you know, I've done it on my own for 50 years. I've studied the physiology and nuances of how the body works. The body only produces things because it needs to. Now, if, the, if melatonin is produced in all these varied sites, there's a reason why it's produced. And probably one of the main reasons is, again, this is something a lot of people don't know about melatonin. It's a very potent natural antioxidant. It, pre it, pre it prevents what they call oxidative reactions in the body that are out of control that can cause cellular damage and also initiate various diseases and cause DNA damage and, and, and uh, initiate cancer and so on and so forth. Uh, but so uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of the properties of melatonin besides its sleep inducing effects that you might not be aware of but are pretty interesting. Uh, 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 melatonin besides being an antioxidant uh, is also a uh, very potent anti-inflammatory and, and inflammation is the cornerstone of most degenerative diseases including cancer cardiovascular disease, cardiovascular disease and even aging has a relation to systemic inflammation and, and, and melatonin is an extremely potent and natural anti-inflammatory as a matter of fact there's some studies showing that uh, if you have joint injuries or ligament injuries, taking a melatonin supplement will actually help the healing process. It helps you recover faster from joint injuries. Uh, melatonin also helps liver disease. Uh, it, it's been shown to, uh, uh, for example, the most probably the most common liver disease today, uh, affecting approximately, I think the uh, the the figure is 20 million Americans. They walk around with this thing called non-alcoholic fatty liver. As the name implies, this, this in, it involves a, a deposition of excess fat in the liver. And non-alcoholic fatty liver is a forerunner to liver cirrhosis, which, is involved, which involves excessive scar tissue formation in the liver, meaning the liver cells are dying. And, if, and that can, in turn, lead to liver cancer or liver failure, which would require a liver transplant. Uh, so what, what uh, melatonin has been shown to do is it seems to lower inflammatory chemicals that are involved with non-alcoholic fatty liver, and it also lowers uh, elevated liver enzymes, which are also related to uh, fa uh, fatty liver. Uh, also, there's a uh, sometimes um, related to liver uh, problems, you get a problem called thrombocytopenia, which is, which is a, uh, a lack of... of uh, red blood cells uh, and um, what they found is that melatonin supplemented at 10 milligram daily for two weeks resulted in a significant increase in the average 
platelet count. I, I shouldn't say, I, I have to change, I, I didn't mean red blood cells, I meant platelets. Thrombocytopenia refers to a diff deficiency in blood platelets. Platelets are these small little elements that circuit in the blood that are used in the blood clotting pl process. They're very important for blood clotting. And when you have thrombocytopenia, you're not making enough uh, platelets that could cause serious medical problems. Uh, it turns out that, um, t as I said, taking 10 milligrams of melatonin for two weeks led to a significant increase in the average platelet count compared to a placebo. It also uh, led to significant differences, uh, uh, decreases, I should say, in various liver enzymes that were elevated, such as AST, ALT, also total bilirubin, which is produced in the liver, uh, and um, and also uh, it improves the actual overall health of the liver. So that's another thing. Uh, as far as w in women's medicine, supplemental, uh, uh, women might be interested in this one. This is going to be a bit of a surprise. Uh, melatonin has been shown to be really effective in helping women who have premenstrual uh, distress disorder. It's called, I think I, I, I said that right. Uh, I'm sorry, it's called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. In other words, this is, um, this is uh, you know, the problem that women get when they're, uh, when they're on their periods, when they get uh, severe psychological distress, they kind of go crazy, a lot of them. It has to do with hormone imbalances. But um, they've shown that women with uh, premenstrual dysphoric disorder have decreased melatonin levels uh, in both two of the phases of the menstrual cycle. And when, you, when um, in a small study of five women who had premenstrual disorder, participants took two milligrams of sustained release melatonin one hour before bedtime for, for three consecutive menstrual cycles uh, and, and improved sleep onset uh, and it also uh, vastly improved uh, mood uh, giving them um, there's another disease that women get called endometriosis which involves the, uh, the uh, uh, migration of uterine tissue in uh, areas where it's not supposed to be and can cause severe pain uh, mel uh, they found that providing melatonin uh, to women who have endometriosis reduces menstrual sin symptoms because endometriosis particularly uh, causes a lot of pain during menstrual cycles. In this trial of 40 women aged 18 to 45 with endometriosis, participants were randomized to receive either placebo or 10 milligrams of melatonin daily for eight weeks. Melatonin supplementation resulted in the reduction of daily pain score by 40% and a reduction in dysmenorrhea or painful periods by 38% compared to placebo. And all me melatonin also led to an 80% reduction in the use of pain uh, analgesics or pain kill painkillers. Uh, the uh, uh, and another study showed that supplement supplementing three milligrams of melatonin daily for three months reduced climacteric complaints. In other words postmenopausal women, such as hot flashes, irritability, uh, taking uh, melatonin of three milligrams for three months uh, also great relief, greatly relieved those symptoms. And of course, this has nothing to do with, with the sleep effect. Uh, also, uh, some studies show that melatonin might be useful for diabetes. Um, melatonin increases insulin sensitivity. Uh, one of the problems with diabetes is insulin insensitivity. As a matter of fact, uh, insulin insensitivities, it's considered pre-diabetes. It affects uh, probably about 50 million Americans. It's silent, you don't know it. The only thing you notice is kind of elevated blood glucose at rest. Uh, apparently some studies show that uh, uh, melatonin helps to relieve insulin insensitivity. Uh, a lot of the damage done by diabetes uh, in the body has to do with excessive oxidative stress and melatonin has been shown to relieve that uh, that oxidative stress. Nocturnal mel melatonin levels have been shown to be significantly reduced in diabetics compared to people without diabetes and are also lower in those with, with retina retinopathic complications. In other words, diabetic retinopathy is where the diabetes affects the retina of the eye. It can cause blindness uh, and apparently uh, melatonin helps with that. Uh, a 12-week randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of 62 people with type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease received either 10 milligrams of melatonin daily or placebo 
compared to placebo, the use of melatonin was found to have a number of, of benefits. Uh, this included a significant increase in plasma glutathione levels, which is a natural antioxidant in the body, a significant increase in nitric oxide, which lowers blood pressure, uh, and a significant reduction in oxidative stress markers. The uh, also reduced levels of C-reactive protein, which is an indicator of overall inflammation, uh, and it also uh, lowered significant, significantly lowered fasting blood sugar levels. Uh, and as I said, it increased uh, insulin um, sensitivity. Uh, uh, what about cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease, of course, is the number one killer of humans throughout the world. Melatonin has a vasodilating and hypotensive effect, probably because it favorably affects the release of nitric oxide, which dilates blood vessels. Uh, melatonin improves coronary blood flow and modulates the activity of no nitric oxide synthase. That's the enzyme that converts arginine into nitric oxide. Melatonin has also been shown to be decreased in patients with critical cardiovascular disease, such as those with congestive heart failure. Melatonin supplement, supplementations have been shown to attenuate age-dependent uh, cardiac uh, rhythm disturbances uh, with a modest dose given over short periods. Even at a dose of only 1.5 milligrams for three weeks, melatonin had, uh, had a hypotensive effect, meaning it lowered blood pressure. Uh, and um, it also... Uh, uh, it decreased the uh, the uh, the possibility of cardiac arrhythmias. Uh, it also seems to help people with advanced atherosclerosis. Uh, and um, let's see what else. Uh, other other things that are affected by melatonin. Um, hmm. Obstructive sleep apnea. That's when you stop. I have it myself. That's when you stop breathing while you're sleeping. It's um, it, it doesn't sound too bad, but it's a horrible, horrible thing to have because it's a it it, it it's a, a precursor for dementia later in life, and it also is, causes severe heart problems. Uh, having uh, untreated sleep apnea, speaking of myself, is anecdotal, caused me to have a episode of atrial fibrillation, which is an abnormal heart rhythm in the upper chambers of the heart which caused me to go to the emergency room. And that was related to untreated sleep apnea. I do treat it now with a CPAP machine. I have it under control. But it turns out that uh, some people with obstructive sleep apnea have been shown to have abnormal melatonin secretion with an abs absent uh, nighttime melatonin peak. So it, it could be... Uh, I, I didn't know this, of course, at the time. But it, apparently... Uh, Melatonin might actually help with uh, sleep apnea. With sleep apnea, you're awakened several times during the night, so you have very fragmented sleep, which is just destroys your immune system. It's terrible. Uh, uh, melatonin has also been shown to be useful in various autoimmune diseases. I'm not going to get into that, but you, uh, you guys, since you're probably interested, in, I'm sure a lot of people watch this are interested in bodybuilding and fitness, let's talk about that. Uh, you might have seen a couple of blog posts in the last couple of years about melatonin and its relationship to growth hormone. And it is true. Uh, they've shown uh, studies that uh, as a fi a providing, let me see the dosage here, providing 5 milligrams of uh, melatonin one hour before uh, cycling exercise increased GH release during exercise by 72%. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Uh, another study involved weight training showed that taking only one milligram of, uh, of melatonin an hour before training doubled the release of growth hormone that normally occurs during exercise. Now, before you run out, you know, somebody listening to this might say, well, gee, I, if uh, melatonin promotes that kind of release of growth hormone, maybe I should start taking it an hour before exercise. But consider the fact that, grow that melatonin also puts you to sleep. I mean, it relaxes you. Uh, when, when you work, when you work out, you want to be kind of aggressive. You want to be, you know, ram. You want to really get into the workout and work out hard. Melatonin would work against that. So I would never take melatonin before a workout. Working out itself, especially if you don't have carbohydrates before the workout, 
will uh, will stimulate a pretty good amount of growth hormone release uh, without it taking any melatonin or anything like that. So I would say to you know, use the exercise itself. Uh, melatonin, uh, also taking melatonin 30 minutes before exercise uh, actually was shown to inc uh, was actually shown to increase uh, actually pr uh, promotes the uh, a, 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 a increased blood glucose level, which would tend to give you more energy when you train. However, uh, a, another study showed no improvement in athletic performance when melatonin was taken out before exercise. But well, you know this is paradoxical because other studies do show exercise performance increases. Melatonin also another important aspect of exercise related to I'm sorry m melatonin related to exercise is that melatonin maintains mitochondria. Mitochondria are uh, little cigar-shaped organe uh, organelles in the cells where energy is produced as ATP. Fat is oxidized in beta oxidation. The more mitochondria you have the healthier your muscles are going to be, the healthier you're going to be. It also slows the aging process. And mel melatonin, probably because of its anti-inflammatory and uh, antioxidant effects, helps to protect uh, mitochondria, especially in muscle. Uh, uh, older, women with, uh, older women who have sarcopenia, which is a loss of muscle with age, always show low melatonin levels, and they think there's a relationship between having low melatonin and the onset of sarcopenia, which again refers to the loss of muscle with age. Uh, they found uh, uh, that uh, if they give castrated rats melatonin, now this is in rats, if they give castrated rats melatonin, the melatonin will replace the testosterone that's missing because the rats have been castrated. Now, that's an amazing uh, situation when you think about it. There's no evidence that that occurs to humans and humans, meaning that uh, melatonin, I don't think, could be used as a testosterone replacement. But on the other hand, it, it's been shown not to suppress natural testosterone production in humans. It also doesn't suppress gonadotrophins, such as luteinizing hormone, which promotes the synthesis of testosterone in humans. Uh, another study showed that uh, in mice, older, older mice... If you give them melatonin, it reverses almost all indices of muscle damage after exercise. It helps the mice recover. Again, an animal study, we don't know if it, but on the other hand, we do know that melatonin is a potent natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, so uh, anyway, I think uh, I should also point out melatonin, in case you're wondering, it was discovered in 1958, and it was first identified in 1959. So it's a relatively new uh, hormone. Uh, but it is a hormone, so take that into account. You know, uh, it's one of the few hormones that are sold over the counter. Uh, DHA is another hormone that's sold over the counter. But these things are relatively safe unless they're, you know, used in excessively high quantities. In some medical conditions, they give as much as 60 milligrams a day of uh, melatonin, which is a gigantic amount. Uh, gigantic's too small a word. That's remember, your body produces melatonin in microgram amounts. Yet, even giving 60 milligrams a day hasn't led to any serious side effects, but I don't recommend that. <laughs> so that's about it for melatonin, uh, uh, you know, the unusual aspects of melatonin. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research you can use today, effective fat loss techniques, ergogenic aids, uh, hormonal therapy, supplement science. Which ones work, which ones don't. I will tell you the truth about supplements because I'm not associated with any food supplement company, which today is very rare. Most of the people who, not all, but most of the people who do YouTube videos, they got a dog in the fight, like the cliche says. They usually are either selling their own supplements or they're on contract to supplement companies. So you ain't going to get the truth from them. You're not going to get the truth. With me, I'm not associated with any supplement company. I'm going to lay it on the line and tell you what works and what doesn't for the majority of people. I also cover women's health and fitness uh, and many other topics. I cover more topics and my applied metabolics than any other digital publication. It's 40 to 50 pages every month, no ads, just pure information besides state-of-the-art medical information and nutrition information. It also, uh, you also get my 60 years 
of study and empirical knowledge, stuff I've learned in the trenches, being in the gym. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. When I worked for bodybuilding magazines for over 35 years, I interviewed countless top bodybuilding champions. I know their tricks, and I, 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 all of this is, uh, is provided in applied metabolics. Uh, I guarantee you, after reading it for three months, you'll learn enough where you, you yourself will be considered an expert. That's how in-depth, uh, and, and don't take my word for it. Ask anybody who's a subscriber to Applied Met. They'll tell you how in-depth those articles are. Uh, I did one, for example, on, on COVID-19, nutrition against COVID-19. That article alone, if you include all the supplemental, supplementary material that was included in the article, that article alone was 100 pages. That's bigger than an ebook. That was one article. Now, most of my articles are not that long. Most of them are 30 to 40 pages, but they're a little bit longer than other articles because they're very in-depth. I tell you everything you need to know about any subject. It's written in plain English, minimal jargon. Any technical term I use, I explain immediately so you don't have to reach for a medical dictionary. And when you, do, when you subscribe to Applied Metabolics, which, by the way, is not expensive at all, costs less than the cost. It's, it's um, something like four times cheaper than, than subscribing to a daily newspaper. And I know, I know nobody reads newspapers anymore. But I use it. It's also cheaper than buying uh, latte at Starbucks or something like that. A lot less expensive. If you buy a latte uh, at Starbucks, you'll be, you'll be spending about 80% more each month than you spend on uh, Applied Metabolics. Uh, when you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I, I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and medical topics. It's only open to sub current subscribers of Applied Metabolics. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics that, they're, they, that they have questions about, or any question that comes to mind, as long as it's a short uh, question, I'll answer it to only current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions for the simple reason that I only have a limited amount of time, and I'd rather give that time to people who support my work, meaning current subscribers of Applied Metabolics. So if you, if you, uh, if you want to ignore me and send me an email, uh, and you're not a subscriber, uh, the email will be put immediately in my file called G, which is for garbage. Uh, in other words, it'll be deleted. <laughs> uh, just being honest with you here. Uh, and uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, you're welcome to leave uh, comments under these videos, uh, You know, suggestions for future videos. I, if I feel the topic uh, would interest a large number of people, I'll do a video. I'll do a video on it. Also, if you get any benefit from these videos that I post, which by the way I post every week, usually very early on Monday, uh, Monday night or early Tuesday morning. Every every week I post a new video. Subscribe to my channel, and you can tell others about it on my channel. They're welcome to subscribe. Obviously, there's no cost. It's free. So uh, that's about all I could say. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have. Go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.